Hi. Um, first, right off the bat, I want to thank Cassie for uh, doing Kartanama. Uh, Mapka is a cool bunch. I like us. Uh, and I really like the wedding. This is really different. This is really nice to watch a movie. Anyway, uh, uh, I start off my slides with uh, a little confession about myself. Uh, right now that I'm approaching the age of 30 and I haven't figured out what the Spice Girl song is all about. They keep saying, you know, it's as big as they come. Uh, uh, my name is Sunil Pai. I work at Yahoo on the Maps team. And uh, I'll be fairly amateur level talk. Don't ex I'm not really an expert. I just want to give you a peek into how we do things over at Yahoo when it comes to location-based data. Uh, one of, I think at Yahoo, uh, it turns out to be a competitive advantage the more data you have, especially when it comes to stuff for like content, so theaters and uh, pizza places and uh, driving rental businesses. So that sort of thing is important for us. And uh, there's a fair amount of uh, investment going in that direction now uh, onto the Maps platform. And um, first, uh, before I put uh, this off, no, um, before I jump into this, how many here are consider themselves fully well versed with map technologies like <coughs> have, have any of you ever used google maps api and built something on a web page okay cool that's a fair amount okay have you ever contributed anything back to openstreetmap not bad okay uh, i don't have to do a lot of talking then um, the problem with map data in general is that it's highly unstructured and incomplete Problem is that it is a moving data set. Uh, probably not as often as web pages change, but it is a moving data set and the person with the most data at the end of it wins. Um, and <clears throat> while it might sound like a technological problem to some, it sounds like a big data problem, uh, Google actually got this right. They spent a whole lot of human manpower on actually accumulating data for the data set. And uh, that is what is carrying them through a lot of interesting news articles in the past couple of days. Uh, so, the problem is, of course, that in real life, for example, something as simple as addresses aren't trivial. Um, uh, this, uh, for example, address standards in Tokyo, they start with the name of the city, move backwards towards you know, the house number, road number, and so on and so forth. Uh, in Bangalore, we use a landmark-based system where we're like, you know, you take the right at the bottom. And uh, no, seriously, right? That, that's that's how we give addresses to people. We don't tell people come to Fourth Cross Fifth Main. That would work in New York, where you know where the roads are and all that. Here you say, okay, listen, you go to an 80 feet road, you see Bada, you take a right, uh, head down. There's one little temple. Take a left, second house is mine. <laughs> this is this is how addresses work in India. I frankly, I, I don't know how the postman does it because I don't see an army of them asking people on the road, sir, where is the <laughs> um, and. This is one of my favorite addresses. I just like it because it's pretty. Uh, this is South Africa uh, uh, in Johannesburg. Huge place. Very short address. Everything gets to you on time. It's, uh, they've put a lot of investment into actually making a whole lot of neighborhoods uh, well organized, so to speak. Uh, this is the same thing with New York, of course. You know, you can figure out the grid and you know exactly where you are. You can't really get lost in the city. Unless you're on an iPhone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so the idea then is like how do we standardize on something like an address format? And an address needn't even be just a single point. It'll be a shape. Uh, um, it could be directions. Directions are essentially polylines. You know, kind of this point to this point to this point, uh, with specific markers on it and all that. Um, Yahoo, obviously, because of the number of properties that use it internally, we have to figure out a common standard at least amongst ourselves, even if we aren't using the most open of standards. Uh, until last year, Yahoo actually provided a mapping API for the interface to pull that since. But internally, for the number of people who actually use the platform, we need a bunch of standardizations. Uh, we share a bunch of them at these links. You can grab it off SlideShare, or you can write it down right now. Um, but these, this is, I'll, I'll be giving you a couple of demos with this in a bit. Uh, we have public-facing APIs for actually resolving words into locations and figuring out like the word Delhi will resolve to, well, hopefully New Delhi. A uh, fun fact, there are about 10 Delhis in the world. There's one in East Timor, there's one in Michigan. Um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, these are a bunch of open APIs and slash geo is basically where we keep most of the work. Uh, Fire Eagle uh, is actually, you know, it's one of those unsung heroes along with YQL and all that. I'm a big cheerleader for the company. 
Uh, just to give you an idea of the kind of properties that do use maps, mapping technologies at, uh, at Yahoo. Uh, I have screenshots for the few, but I just want to give it out there. Like, this is essentially a couple of hundred people at least uh, needing to decide on a common format and having a consistent way of doing it across the company so it doesn't look like we are using five different time providers, for example. Um, we um, also part uh, we get most of our data from Nokia, if any of you knew this. Uh, so we partner with Nokia. It's a strange relationship. Like we partner with Nokia, Nokia partners with uh, Microsoft. Microsoft is working with uh, OSM, and um, there are little cars with cameras going down the trees, uh, down the roads in a lot of countries. It's, no, no, I, it's fascinating for me. This ecosystem now is getting to a place where we will start sharing data fully soon enough. Fingers crossed. Uh, so yeah, a uh, couple of screenshots just to quickly go through it. This is uh, this is on the web analytics page inside Yahoo. Uh, this is for Yahoo Careers on the standard Yahoo Careers page. You can choose a location and uh, find a job that interests you. Flickr has a pretty nice, very clean implementation of uh, photos taken around the place. You can type a tag and so on and so forth. Um, um, Hot Jobs has a you know find jobs around this area kind of interface. We have a little mapping thing for that. Um, this is uh, Yahoo Locals, like businesses, like uh, you suppose you type Domino's in Yahoo and it tells you, okay, you know, there are about three Domino's near you, here are the phone numbers, this is where it is. And a good sense of this is um, we can figure out how long your pizza is going to take before it comes back. It's useful for it. Uh, this is, uh, just to show that we, specifically because of the number of locales, this is a, a Japan Maps implementation. Uh, they're actually migrating to something newer now. Uh, just as a local change and so on, uh, but uh, this is where, where you know you, you would talk about while you're writing your code, how will you figure out how to show an address when you're in the Hong Kong Intel or in the uh, India Intel or the US Intel. Uh, moving on, uh, Yahoo Real Estate. Uh, simple enough. Uh, this is for analytics. We have an internal dashboard that uh, uses a fair bit of mapping and heat maps to real estate. Everything was markers, I suppose. Um, there's a trip planner thing. Um, San Francisco, find me the cheapest tickets to get there and where would I stay if I get there. Uh, and this is upcoming for events. So uh, you'd have a Hasgeek event here and you would say, okay, come here. Um, I actually wanted to talk a bit about the technology stack that runs all these things. Uh, stupid me, I didn't actually do uh, too much work on that without re revealing too much. Uh, there's a ton of Java in there, there's some C++. Our front end layer is purely JavaScript, we bet on the web. Uh, we like YQL a lot. Yahoo query language, please tell me there's one person in this crowd who, oh, uh, yeah, okay, y YQL, I will show you, YQL is the best, right? Uh, just, just so we're clear, I'm also wearing a t-shirt from a dead software company from a dead JavaScript library. So, uh, I like, uh, anyway, so uh, there's a ton of Java, there's a lot of JavaScript. Um, we do uh, most of our requests across properties, cross domains. So we use JSONP uh, format. There's, it's pretty heavily documented inside Yahoo. Um, what you can do, how you can build your own maps. So essentially, I started in December and I was committing code about like three or four days later. That's uh, this pretty wide wealth of documentation when it comes to this. Um, quickly, I'm going to move on to um, some public-facing APIs on YQL. <laughs> um, four, four quick tricks. Uh, these are all, there are many, many, many more functions that I would encourage you to have a look at. Uh, this is free to use. Uh, if you need to run a successful business on it, contact Yahoo and whatever. But it's pretty cool. I want to show you, uh, show you that. Uh, one is quickly, you can scan a bit of text and extract places from it. For example, uh, from the hit 1980-something song, uh, Aruba, Jamaica, who I want to take it. Uh, like you Call select star from geo.placemaker, which would be the placemaker API. I want to quickly show you what it looks like. Uh, I should just drag the whole window. Let me do that in a second. But yeah, so you say, you know, uh, select star from, and it returns you a nice little J. This is in JSONP, of course, so you don't have to worry about setting up a proxy or anything. Uh, open it up, and it's uh, found, let's see, it's found Aruba, and it's found Jamaica, and it gives you. When I was talking about standardization across Yahoo, every point, every physical feature, every 
square shape as a void, we call it a where on earth ID, and you can use this uniquely across your property. So for example, you can save this and say, okay, give me data regarding OID, so on and so forth. You can also resolve, of course, Aruba and so on. But anyway, so that's the first trick. Scan a bunch of text and find out what location based stuff is in it. Uh, you could scan an email and possibly, uh, if you say, will you meet me at Take Fire Lounge at 8 o'clock for the Carton Amar Drink Club, uh, it could probably pass that to a thing and render a map as a use case. Okay, uh, second trick. Uh, get actual details about a place. Uh, this is actually the Delhi example that I was talking about. Um, the idea is that you are given text, you know, you'll say, okay, I live in, uh, I live in Bangalore or I live in Koramangla or so wherever it is. Uh, my simple uh, demo is, uh, of course, Delhi. Uh, figures out what all Delhi's are there. I'm just choosing name and country because it, like, probably, otherwise it throws back a ton of data about you about every Delhi that it finds in the whole world. Uh, you can, um, um, yeah, so for example, uh, 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 number one list is obviously Delhi, uh, there's one in the US, there's in East Timor, there's in Canada, there's, uh, there are a whole bunch of Delhi's, all with, uh, you can select, instead of selecting just name and country, like I've done. So Whitefield is essentially SQL for the web, just to give you an analogy, just if you're trying to figure this out. Uh, so yeah, uh, there's a place where you can actually get information regarding a place if you want to, uh, if you want to resolve it. Uh, third trick, super simple reverse geocoding, find what is at a particular place, pass it a lag, pass it along, and simple enough, it finds this somebody's house in Bangalore, it's at Embassy Apana Apartments. So if you're in the audience, I didn't know. Um, Anyway, so yeah, uh, a, few, a few things that you can notice just to, uh, uh, for details, it gives an entire, uh, it passes you back, lat long we have a quality score, which means a bunch of different things, based, so how closely it is matching your thing. Uh, there should be a, there should be a bounding box on that. Or I, I suppose you have to call, it, it'll give you a bounding box, it'll give you a little rectangle into which the area fits. So for example, if you pick San Francisco, you pick the city of San Francisco, uh, excluding the airport, I guess, uh, but, and, and so on. So that's trick number three. Uh, uh, finally, is because we hold a um, vast database of, um, well, vaguely structured data um, based on whatever country and so on, so forth, um, and you want to actually get a whole bunch of geographical data regarding a particular place, what state it belongs to, what country it belongs to, what area it is. Um, uh, this is a complex vehicle query, it's one query inside the other. But yeah, select start from zero dot places dot belongs to where so on so. That looks like uh, that looks like this. It uh, that longs. It says that it belongs to uh, uh, the time zone. Asia, Calcutta. It gives a little bounding box, uh, and so on and so forth. So. Um, uh, so yeah, if you want to get geographical information regarding a particular place, so. That's one thing. Uh, there's a lot, lot more that you can do with this. Uh, you can just say show tables in the YQL console. It gives you a whole bunch of APIs that you can happily call. I mean, even Flickr has a places API. So you can say around this lat long, around the city of San Francisco, give me all the photos in the last um, three days with an interesting score of about six, seven. Uh, it's pretty cool, check this out. So yeah, uh, this is what uh, Yahoo exposes to the public as APIs. Uh, the nature of this data is a little iffy. Like I said, uh, we do license the data out from Nokia, but we do create our own user experience on top of it and augment it with uh, stuff from locals and uh, photos and everything else. Uh, yeah, so as a side note, I actually want to go into the uh, user experience. Uh, um, I'm really excited about Google Glasses. I mean, uh, I love my phone, don't get me wrong. It's great, that screens are great and so on. Uh, but I really like Star Trek. Yes, it's, uh, that, that's the base inspiration for a whole bunch of ideas by a number of people, Star Trek. Uh, eventually, we're going to get to a Holodeck-styled paradigm. But you will actually be able to uh, visualize environments which are not at your current place. Now, whether it happens with glasses or a Holodeck, which would look suspiciously like this, uh, or, or anything. Um, right now, we are at a level where we have the web. We have native apps on uh, 
mobile and we have uh, uh, we have desktops three major consumers uh, uh, for 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 consumers uh, then there are a whole bunch of startups uh, that are actually using this data for a number of other reasons for example supply chain management i'm sure flipkart has great maps um, i'm sure uh, mintra is putting effort into uh, shortening the amount of time it takes for a package to go from one place to another so directions is another place where uh, not not just as a ux perspective but uh, from a data perspective itself i think we can get a lot stronger and reach a lot more people i'm going to quickly like finish our wrap up um, done and take any questions oh uh, sure so my query to you sir Hey. Uh, <laughs> I, think was, I, I think I was getting feedback. Go on, tell me. Yeah. So, what are the terms for the API? So, can I use the output from the reverse geo code itself in the GIS? In the GIS um, I believe so. Okay. Uh, uh, I do believe that I'm not completely sure about the terms, to be honest. I, I work on maps.yahoo.com. I don't actually delve into these APIs as often as I'd like. Uh, that being said, I do believe there is a commercial term for the license. If you are actually going to make a product that's making money for you, I think there is some sort of agreement. That being said, I think it has a really high cap of number of uh, hits that you can do. In any case, in the hundreds of thousands for free. Uh, so you know, just look for the wider terms and licenses or geo. Uh, yeah. Uh, you mentioned about OID or something, right? Yeah. OID. Yeah. So, uh, where on earth? I, yeah, that's what we call it. I just, you know, I, I didn't come up with that one. Yeah, so, uh, Can you guys hear him? And make sure you talk. Yeah, yeah, so, I'll repeat what he says. Yeah, sure. So, uh, uh, is there any kind of taxonomy that you follow when you, uh, you know, may, uh, assign a particular number to a specific place? For example, Bangalore has a number or something. Mm -hmm. right? So, Koramangla within Bangalore, is it like some more digits appended to that? Oh, not not to the ID itself. No, it's not a it's not a string. It's okay. it's a number in itself. Uh, and there are even uh, and voids aren't even something that changes change. Like for example, if we point to a place and say that, as an example. Mm, Okay, uh, Michael Palya is a little uh, area in Bangalore, right? It's a road, I see the sign, and there's a hero over a road. Let's say that's given an ID of X. Now, let's say that somebody bulldozes through the thing and builds a giant hospital there. We still have to keep the old OID alive. We actually mark it as historical and gone. Uh, so, it's not a composite ID with different strings or so on. It's they generate it on some So, if I, if I see an OID, I can't just say, you know, this is somewhere in Delhi or somewhere in Bangalore. Not really, no, no. But you have a little API that just takes it and gives you a lot of things. So, um, oh, sure. So, do you have a standardized, in, in turn in India, would you have a standardized way of addressing various places in Bangalore? So, for example, when you're doing mapping or is it is it, is it something that you're developing of like, like Google Directions? But we don't have that yet for, I guess, all places in India. Do um, you have some way of internally mapping those places? And okay, uh, so you're basically talking about ways to add to this data set? <laughs> yeah, and maybe sort of organizing it so that all addresses within India are, are in a standardized format. Like, for example, Johannesburg. Okay, so um, okay, uh, vaguely personal opinion. Don't take anything I say against Yahoo or whatever. Uh, <laughs> I, I got to say this. <laughs> um, but we try to get as much data as we can from anywhere we can, whether it's from the yellow pages or from address books. Or, well, not the yellow pages, but you get my. Uh, we try to get as much data as we can. Uh, that being said, there are only so much. Uh, there's only so many resources that Yahoo is putting on maps. Um, it could be a lot better. Um, I would love a huge team. Um, and we could do some cool stuff, but for what it's worth, right now we we we, cons we use the map the maps platform even is centered around uh, in in some way, and they are essentially US centric, Europe centric, uh, some part of Asia Pacific. Uh, India isn't so much on the radar right now for driving directions. Driving directions do work for what it's worth, uh, except it's not very well documented. It'll say you know take a right in two hundred meters. It's, there's a lot of missing gaps where it won't tell you the name of the road and so on. Uh, but it's fairly accurate and we are trying to make it better. We are constantly, constantly, constantly trying to make it better. Because you know what, you could have the crappiest interface to it 
and the one with the most data wins. That's why, that's why like, I want OSM to win, because once OSM wins, everybody will go in that direction. Decisions have to be put on hold. A whole bunch of new things are coming in the pipeline. Our new CEO is awesome. Big fan. Just so make clear. We are big fan of this uh, So, especially when it comes to geo, we're realizing that it is a competitive advantage, and we do want to do And things will get a lot better. For what it's worth. Uh, is there somebody that you talk to at Yahoo regarding your problems? Uh, yes, we we sent a lot of messages. Okay, why didn't you send it to me and then be another address? That was <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, please, actually, seriously, get in touch with me and I'll see what I can find out for you. One last question. Last question, yeah. Do you have country specific data model? See, we have just this whatever you have mentioned, like Tokyo, mm -hmm. then Jonas, but that's one I think is mm -hmm. most. So, like that you have separate models, when you send a query. Oh, absolutely. You're talking about the data varying from Intel to Intel. Uh, like. The structure of the data, for example, in India, we have got different levels of information, like political information. Yeah, so it, without going into too many details about the standard inside Yahoo, uh, a lot of it is very simple, like line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4. Oh, right. And then we try to extract a bunch of uh, geographical markers from the address. So, second main, fifth cross, so on and so forth. Um, as to, uh, and it is definitely tuned for per country, like there is an Intel switch that we will pass into our API call and get data in a particular format. Uh, yeah, so the answer is yes. Yeah, so when you send that query, for example, Delhi. Mm. So oh, uh, that's cool, that works on arbitrary strings. No, that's okay. But the levels of information will it be different if I send different queries? That information was taken something from geo to exist. Uh, oh, sure, yeah, absolutely. You could find out, uh, oh, so you want to see like at a state level this thing, uh, what data is available for it? Like for example, a city in India and a city in Germany is completely different. Because yeah. of the hierarchy and, you know, lots of uh, and, and minute level information in India. Right, right. So, do you have that specific uh, coding or modeling of data? Um, sure, yeah, to some extent, yes. Like I said, for an Intel specific thing, when you know that you're searching inside a particular country, the data format that comes back is vaguely different in a couple of places. For example, the, yeah, the Tokyo thing is a great example. Line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4 is in the opposite order. Uh, it's up to the consumer of the API to decide how to deal with it. That's how we're dealing with ours. Like, we have separate templating, uh, separate presentation for uk.maps.yahoo.com versus maps.yahoo.com, which would be the US version. That's all. Uh, oh, yeah. Anyway. Oh, thank you. <laughs>